Well, the pads are on. It's the first day um, here in training camp where the pads come on. So that's always exciting. It's football after all. So it's like, all right, let's hit, run, jump, tackle. Let's see what we got, see what stands out. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at first day training camp with pads on and, and if quite a lot of information. Taylor Decker, of course, gets um, gets a contract extension. We're going to talk about that, the whole vibe of the franchise. Like he's another example of how it's like, what, what in the world? How is this happening? Where this is where guys want to be. He's so pumped to be here. It's just crazy. And it's just really awesome. So Enos Rakestraw Jr., first one that comes to mind here, reportedly is a whole different player with the pads on. And we'll get more into the rest of the defense and how they dominated the day. But Enos Rakestraw is one example of, okay, pads are on. That's his whole thing, physicality. And it, he changes along with the other guys, but he had changes the secondary. It's like, man, here is a team a half away from going to the Super Bowl, and the secondary was really bad. I mean, just straight up really bad. And so you heard Dan Campbell today talk about how Brian Branch, when he comes back, he's probably going to be at safety, which is a little surprising to me because it feels like we have safety kind of wrapped up, but apparently we don't. He loves Brian Branch at safety. And we've been hearing this from Pride of Detroit. Actually, it was all over it saying Brian Branch is probably going to go to safety. So Brian Branch is safety. Enos Rakes drop. That allows him to drop in a little bit more. Allows these new guys that we've got to play outside and inside. Emmanuel Mosley's healthy. I did a video on that about how the guy's not even supposed to be out there yet, but he's just like playing. He's already out there. So the defense, especially the secondary, looks really, really good. And that's huge. So if you look at some observations from today and um we'll look at a couple of things that I, I really like so first of all the first team offensive line taylor decker and davenport both pushed each other into a pretty close stalemate in both sets so remember davenport somebody we really got our eye on he's opposite of aiden hutchinson that's great to see and i know this is like He's just out there. I don't know why. I just feel like he wasn't, you know, he didn't participate there for a couple of practices. And it's just like, geez, well, here's our guy that we need. He's got a history of in injuries and he's not even out there. He's out there. Let's go. Graham Glasgow and Anwuzarike also was too close to call in their two matchups. I'm oddly happy with that. Again, I don't know why. It's like, it's great to see that Graham Glasgow, who's older and that we need big time at guard this year is holding his own. I love that Frank rag now dominated Broderick Martin and Chris Smith. Love to see that as well. Um, it's what you'd expect. I love that Zeitler was caught off guard by a McNeil's power. Beautiful. Love that. Now the offensive linemen were asked about the defensive line and Frank rag now said, I think the new defensive line coach has been great for our defensive line. They're twitchy. They're fast. They look really explosive. So, and there it was right there. So you get to see Aleem McNeil really doing things that you love. Panay Sewell got better of, of Aiden Hutchinson in both reps. Some of the media argue that Hutch may have gotten home on a wide arc, arcing pass move. But from my vantage point, I believe Sewell pushed him past the pocket and won the rep. Just imagine that. Panay Sewell and Hutchinson just going, I mean, the top... Just the fact that we have a top three offensive tackle and a top three defensive end just practicing against each other. That's beautiful. Love that. So really cool. Now, we looked at some of the second team guys. Not a lot to really comes away from that. But what here's what, what comes away. Here are some highlights. Jameson Williams versus Enos Rakestraw. So I just talked about Rakestraw's physicality. But what about his ability to cover? William uses speed to, to set up Rakestraw on the outside and execute a stiff arm to the corner's face mask. To his credit, Rakestraw was falling to his back. He aggressively secured William's ankle and made the tackle. Nice. Sam Laporta versus Anzalone. Laporta just continues to shine. Montgomery, what's up? Vaki versus Malcolm. Talk about that little matchup. That's a little pretty one there. After being visibly upset after their first meeting ended in a, in a whimper. Why Rodriguez was not going to let his second chance at Vaki go to waste. And when they converted a running back attempted a cutback, Rodriguez was ready and executed a perfect double leg takedown, picking up and slamming him to the ground. Zylstra versus Jalen Reeves, Maven. I mean, some really good stuff here. And so 
love these individual matchups and these are like who you would pick to go up against each other uh, because obviously they did and it's perfect okay let's get to it 11 11 highlights the defense while on previous days the reserves on offense have performed above expectations most of the offensive production on monday came from the superstars st brown blah 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 but beyond that the defense stole the day so they talked about laporta they talked about st brown just being solid while Laporta got the best of Davis on an earlier rep, Davis was quick to respond just a few plays later. Kirby Joseph had a good pass breakup. Gilmore, Amik Robertson came close to an interception. John Kaminsky tipped the ball. They're active and looking good. Jack Campbell and really re- recently signed Malik Jefferson. So when I look at this, you're happy to see that. So in, in technically in you get into pads and you get playing around the defense should be he- ahead of the offense the defense can react to what you're doing the offense doesn't maybe know exactly they're not as crisp they'll get there but we, we needed to see the defense be good we know our offense is going to be good we've got talent all over the place on the offensive side of the ball the defense has to be what what propels us into the playoffs and then into a into a run i mean we're all talking Super Bowl. I get that. That's all. It's absolutely. But it's about can we get that one seed or two? But w- in order to do that, man, our defense is just going to have to steal us two or three games where it's like, man, offense just can't get it going. But defense holds and we play complimentary football and we win 13 to 10. Something weird like that. But if the offense struggled last year, it was a loss and 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 again thankfully the offense consistently played well and put up points and we didn't have to worry about that but if you if you go from winning 9 10 11 games to 11 12 13 wins the offense is going to stumble the defense needs to pick them up so again let, let me know your thoughts in the comments here as we've seen just a lot of positive things come from the Lions. now the other thing Taylor Decker, and, and here's what I'm just stunned with. Not only the Lions winning, not only is the crowd, I mean, the fan base, everything's just, everybody's juiced, but the players themselves, I don't remember, I, I cannot believe the vibe in, in the franchise has gone from negative to so positive so quickly. When Matt Patricia was here, it was like the... It was just the final nail in the coffin to a franchise that had just been trending unsure. And then Matt Patricia comes here, trades away good players, really does everything he possibly can to drive the franchise down, 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 down. And then Dan Campbell gets here and the vibes just completely change. So you hear Taylor Decker talk about, man, what what an honor it is to be here in the Lions. Well, can't believe that he's going to spend all his whole career with one team says the Lions want to win. That's why they're bringing back good players and like, we're going to win. We, we're here to win games. So it's like, dude, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I, I I can't believe. Again, it's not that the Lions are winning. That That is awesome. But it's the trajectory and just the sustainability that's come along with it because there was always those years with the staff, Stafford. We won a few years there, like, but it never felt real good. It felt, yeah, there's a guy out there seems like I think it's Bart Simpson a YouTube channel but it's all 2011 12 13 14 15 16 year full NFL games and you can watch on YouTube and kind of skip ahead and watch and it is fascinating so some of the Lions games I've been watching you know week 13 and 2015 right just random every game was just either a miracle win or a devastating loss every game and it's like this is, it wasn't football. It wasn't like football team winning. It was Stafford and Kelvin, you know, Golden Tate being heroic. Defense couldn't get a stop when they had to absolutely have one. Offense couldn't get a first down when they absolutely had to get one. Said punt it away. Give Aaron Rodgers the ball with 47 seconds and two timeouts, which we learned is an eternity. You know, it's like why did we kick it? Why would we punt it? He's going to, he comes down, kick a field goal. You know, there's just all those, those runs there in, in from 2010 to 2017, 18, whatever, where it's just, Oh, 
here as a Lions fan, it, everything was hard. Now, when we win, man, we win. We're in control of the game. When we lose, we lost, right? We just, there was no, none of this like crazy drama weirdness. So, Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments on this. Lions just heading in the great right direction. First day of pads are on. We'll see all of you on the next one.